YouTube to another exciting episode of The Culture of Currency. Today we are diving into a coin that was part of my last unboxing where all of the coins were actually selected by my wife. Today we are sailing to Tukolo and talking about the newly released Silver Flying Fish or Hahabe. It astonishes me how many coins come out of tiny islands in the Pacific, but that is a chat for another video. Before we get into the silver, we need to learn about the nation that designed this coin so that we can better respect the heritage and background of the artwork. Tokolo is a cluster of islands and more specifically atolls. To me, an atoll is probably the most beautiful naturally occurring geographic structure. This is where you have a landmass that creates a ring around and often hosts a coral reef in the middle. Tokolo has three of these beautiful atolls located about halfway between Hawaii and New Zealand. It is widely accepted that these islands would have been first inhibited by the island hopping and more than proficient sailors of Polynesian descent over a thousand years ago. This is actually where the name Tokolo comes from. Tokolo is one god out of the pantheon of gods in Polynesian culture. As time would have it, the English would do what the English often do and Tokolo would be taken as a British protectorate. That happened in 1889 and was transferred to the domain of New Zealand in 1925. If there were any doubt that the English Navy was not world class, just look at all of the small island nations that still have the Queen's face on them. Tokolo is tiny when it comes to landmass, very tiny in fact. A CIA resource that I use cites them as being about 17 times the size of the National Mall at Washington DC. That means 17 times this little strip of grass leading to Congress. As you would guess, the climate is really dictated by trade winds and the economy is heavy in agriculture. In fact, these islands are in what's called the Pacific Cyclone Belt, which is a fact that I bet most of you, including myself, did not know. I guess it is a lot like an Oklahoma island, which is a weird thing to think about and a topic for another video. The population of Tokolo is about the same as a large high school graduating class in America at approximately 1600 and is mostly Christian due to the English missionaries that were sent for conversions. Their labor force is only about 400 individuals. One great thing about this land is that it was the first to be completely energy independent, with solar powering the entire grid. I'm not sure how impressive that statement really is, seeing as that I'm sure most cities in California have more solar energy, but hey, good for them. Now that you know a little bit about this land, you can help them, and here's how. This small nation thrives on a couple of things, agriculture or food exports, manufacturing stamps, and collectible coins. That's right, if you have this coin, you have directly supported their economy. It's not often that you can say that, but the small mintage makes this coin a direct link to their economic engine. They really could use your support, seeing as that they have to borrow around 15 million each year from New Zealand just to balance their books. Speaking of supporting their economic engine, let's talk about this awesome coin and put it to our scale. On the front of the coin, we have the prerequisite face for any area where the queen is head of state. Under her head, we have the Tuluma, which is the national symbol of this land. This is such an awesome and unique symbol. The Tuluma is a fishing tackle box, basically, and is adorned with a cross showing the Christian influence. Under that, we have a ribbon that features text that translates to Tokolo for God. Kind of ironic, seeing as Tokolo is a Polynesian god, but I digress. All of this is surrounded by a beautiful Polynesian style border. The background is a little flat, but everything is well done and balanced. I think this deserves a 7 out of 10. On the back we have something very unique to silver coinage with the flying fish or hahave. I have always been fascinated by these fish. This is a fish that has many species within its family and spans the oceans themselves. This one is obviously located in the Pacific, but I have seen them in other waters including the Mediterranean, Gulf, and Atlantic. They get their name by having the ability to glide through the air to escape predators like dolphin or tuna, mackerel. They are depicted here quite well. I also love the background 
having some great texture and patterns. The negative space is well in balance, and I think that this deserves an 8 out of 10. Mintage is our next category. This coin is extremely low in mintage, so make sure you grab one while you can. I have it listed as a mintage of 10,000, which scores a perfect 10. We now look at cultural significance. I think this coin's front did something we do not often see in Queen Back Bullion. They added elements of their own culture, like the Toluma and Polynesian border. We also have the flying fish that is not unique to Tokelo, but a symbol of their country. This is going to up the score a little bit to a 7 out of 10, and should be something that other queen-faced coins should take note of. I mean seriously, why can we not have a boomerang or didgeridoo or some other Aussie element on the front of their coinage? Or maybe have a tide surrounding the queen of the British Virgin Islands coin? Sorry for that, just thinking out loud. Now that we come to collectability, I love this coin because I love nature and fish. Objectively, this is not as majestic as, let's say, a marlin or dolphin or even a mighty shark, but it's a pretty coin with extremely low mintage. I think it runs a 6 for collectability. Uniqueness is our last category. We have a fairly unique coin for bullion's sake. Barbados put out a coin not too long ago with this same theme, so it's not the only flying fish, but it is unique in its design and presentation, so it still scores a 6. This brings our total to 41 out of 60 and makes this a respectable coin for anyone's collection. It's not a must have for the majority, but it's one that I personally love and really enjoy knowing that this coin may have put food on the table of somebody in Tokelo. Thank you for riding along with us and please remember to subscribe so that you can stay classy and current with the culture of currency.